Welcome, this is Melinda Barlow, CZT, Certified Zen Tangle Teacher, and today's lesson is Iaxorus by Zentangle.com, and every time I look at one of Zentangle.com's um, names for their tangles, sometimes I just cringe because I think, I can't say that. If I haven't told you, I have audio dyslexia which means I don't hear vowel sounds, A-E-I-O-U. And so when I go to look and try to pronounce something, it is very difficult for me. So I usually, I have an app now on my phone that helps me and a wonderful husband who also helps me. And um, so today, I exorus. And today in class, when I was doing this, I, I always had the class, okay, help me pronounce this. And they did it, but I couldn't remember how it was pronounced. But isn't it lovely done on brown? And here I've done it just along with uh, another tangle on a tile. And it is just a fun tangle to do. You're going to love how easy it is. I am going to do it on a white round tile. And you can get these three-inch round tiles on my website inkadoodles.com and these are um, uh, very nice 100% cotton paper um, with a nice weight of 140 pounds and they are just beautiful and you would you know I love drawing on them I think you would too that's why I I started carrying them so we're just going to start out and we're going to we're going to talk about making something that has a six sections or eight. If I make eight sections, I can divide it equally with a cross and then in between that. But if I want six, I make an X like this to begin with. And then I divide it down the center. Now, I'm going to do that again because I didn't like how... That one turned out. I find it much easier to do it on a square piece, but we're going to... So we make our X, and then we divide it. And you can see that I've got a better division of um, my... They're more equally divided. If I'm real careful about how I make it, my X, and I can do If I make the line here and then try to do it, I could probably do it too. That's what we start with. And now we're going to take and we're going to echo down the side of one of those lines. And I'm going to rotate my tile as I do it because I'm just going to echo down the side of each one of these. Oh, and I forgot I was going to dedicate this particular video to Donna S. And Donna, you'll know, um, today we had a little chat on email and Facebook. I believe it was Facebook. I'm not really sure where we chatted with each other and about my YouTube channel. And I appreciate um you're watching all the time, and I enjoy it. And we're both librarians, and so we have a lot in common. And Don, I, I'm dedicating this one to you. So we have our little um, sections all sectioned off. Now I'm going to start, and I'm going to make a lazy S, kind of well, an S shape. But you notice that I stopped and went under. I did the Holly Buffett. So I just made an S. And I'm going to do it here again. And I like to have kind of a big bubble. It's not a lazy S. It's got more. Oh, got a little pen mark there. It will disappear. I want it to be a nice size S. Just making sure that I do the holly bar effect 
And now I have those S's in each one of my sections. Well, I keep dragging my pen there. And now I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to fill in this. Sometimes I can see, and I don't know if you can see on the video, but I can see some little white specks. So I'm taking my um, pencil, and I'm just coloring over that. I can just color over it with my pencil, and it, it takes away that light reflection. So now we have all these little like, half circles on either side of... Um, the lines, and now I'm going to echo around there. Now, I just picked one of my little V's, and I'm going to do it, and then I will fast forward, speed it up when I do the rest of them. And I'm just going to echo around each one. Now, I've got two echoes around, and they're kind of bumping in. So today in class, someone did this to finish it out. That's not normally how I finish it out, but I loved it. That was Jean, and when Jean did that, it it just it just turned out great. And she came and drew a line right up the center. And when we go to shade, we'll show you what happens. Now, I'm going to do this next one, echo around the outside, and I do the first one, then the next one, oh, and they're bumping into each other. So I would do this. This is how I originally just do kind of a herringbone effect so that it they just touch each other and they build on and you that one didn't quite and they just build up like that now I'm going to do this next one the way Jean did it in class it now let's do a little shading so you I should say okay you notice that I didn't do a little border around here it's just kind of free handing in here sometimes when I do that I will go back and anywhere where it's just the line is just free handing it out there I will just put a little dot on the top of it Now let's do a little shading here. So we can shade just, I'm going to put a little graphite on where I had that line, just on one side. And then I'm going to take my shading stamp and I'm going to blend it just going on one side. Leave one side kind of white. And where it's the little herringbone, I just ran it right up the center of that herringbone little thing. And then I just gave it a little swirl so it kind of goes up both sides. Blend it out. And that helps give your tangle some dimension. 
Here, I just did a little white. Use my little jelly roll and just did some white in between. I love the way it looks, either on white tile or on the brown. It's a great combination with other um, tangles. And there we have Isaurus. I cannot remember how to pronounce it. I-X-O-R-U-S. I'm just going to spell it out. And thanks for watching. Thanks again, Donna, for our chat today. And have a wonderful day.